जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज गोपी जन बल्लबा गिरिवर धारी गोपी जन बल्लबा गिरिवर धारी यशोद नंदना ब्रज जन रंजना यशोद नंदना ब्रज जन रंजना जमुना चीर बनचारी जमुना चीर बनचारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जन बल्लबा भर धारी गोपी जन बल्लबा भर धारी यशोद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यशोद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजना जमुना चीरा मुना चीरा बनचारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी श्रीभार परमहंस प्रिवराज काचार्य अस्तोत्र श्री श्रीमार ऐसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शिल प्रभु पार की जाय जय ओम विष्णु भार परमहंस प्रिवराज काचार्य अस्तोत्र तदसत श्री श्रीमार शिल भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर की जाय 
अनंति कोथि वैष्णव पृंड की जय नमाचार्य शिल हरिदस ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नथानंद श्री अद्वैत गिराधार शिवा श्री गौर भक्त बिंद की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम खुंद राधा खुंद के गोप धन की जाए श्री वृंदवन धाम की जाए श्री नवदी मायापुर धाम की जाए श्री जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की जाए गंगमयी की जाए यमुनामयी की जाए भक्ति देवी की जाए तुलसी देवी की जाए समेर भक्त वृंद की जाए गौ प्रेमानंदी ओ ग्लोरी स्तुदीय समृद्धि बहुत ही All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्री ऋषियर उवाचा साधु पृष्ठा महाराज हरेश चरिताम अद्भुताम याद भगवत महात्म्या भगवत भक्तिवर्धना श्री ऋषिर् उवाच साधु पृष्ठ महाराज हरीश चरितमद्भुत यदागवत महात्म्या भगवद्भक्तिवर्धना श्री ऋषिर् उवाच साधु पृष्ठ महाराज हरीश चरितमद्भुत यदागवत महात्म्या भगवत भक्तिवर्धना श्री ऋषिर् उवाच साधु पृष्ठ महाराज हरीश चरितमद्भुत यदागवत महात्म्या भगवत भक्तिवर्धना उवाच 
Shri Sage Shukadev Goswami said, Sadhu, excellent, Prishtam, inquiry, Maharaj, O great King, Hare, of the Supreme Lord, Hare, Charitam, activities, Adbhutam, wonderful, Yat, from which, Bhagavat, of the Lord's devotee, Prahlad, Mahatmayam, the glories, Bhagavad Bhakti, devotion to the Lord, Bardhanam, increasing. The great sage Shukadev Goswami said, My dear king, you have put before me an excellent question. Discourses concerning the activities of the Lord, in which the glories of his devotees are also found, are extremely pleasing to devotees. Such wonderful topics always counteract the miseries of the materialistic way of life. Therefore, great sages like Narada always speak upon Srimad Bhagavatam because it gives one the facility to hear and chant about the wonderful activities of the Lord. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto Srila Vyasadeva and then begin describing topics concerning the activities of Lord Hari. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. In this verse, Shukadev Goswami offers his respectful obeisances, Krishnaya Munaye, which means to Krishna Dvapayana Vyas. One must first offer one's respectful obeisances to one's spiritual master. Shukadev Goswami's spiritual master is his father, Vyasadeva. And therefore, he first offers his respectful obeisances to Krishna Dvaipayana Vyas and then begins describing topics of Lord Hari. Whenever there is an opportunity to hear about the transcendental activities of the Lord, one must take it. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recommends Kirtaniya Sada Hari one should always engage in Krishna Katha by chanting and talking about Krishna and hearing about him. That is the only occupation of a Krishna conscious person. Om Akyan Timidandasya Kyananjana Salakaya Jakshudun Militam Jina Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manodhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadatishva Padantikam Pandeham Sri Guru Sri Judapadakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupa Sādra-jātāham sahakana raguna kāṁbhitāṁ dham sajīvāṁ sābvaitāṁ sābhadūtāṁ parijanā sahitāṁ krishna caitanya devam Sri Radha krishna padāham sahakana dalitā Sri Risha kāṁbhitāṁ scha he Krishna Karuna Sindhu, Dina Bandhu Jagatpate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namostate, Tatta Kanchana Gaurangi, Radhe Brinda Vaneshwari, Vrishabhanu Sate Devi, Radhanami Hari Priye, 
Kalpaturubhyascha, Kripasindubhya evacha, Patitanam Bhavanibhyo, Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Adaita Gadadha, Sri Vasati Gauda Bhakta Vinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The great sage Shukadev Goswami said, My dear king, you have put before me an excellent question. Discourses concerning the activities of the Lord in which the glories of his devotees are also found are extremely pleasing to devotees. Such wonderful topics always counteract the miseries of the materialistic way of life. Therefore, great sages like Narada always speak upon Srimad Bhagavatam because it gives one the facility to hear and chant about the wonderful activities of the Lord. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto Srila Vyasadeva and then begin describing topics concerning the activities of the Lord. In the beginning of this chapter, Parikshit Maharaj is inquiring from Shukadev Goswami. Why, if the Supreme Lord Vishnu is impartial, the well-wisher of everyone, does he favor Indra to protect him and battle against, often annihilate the Asuras? How is this impartial? Now, for some of us, it may be an obvious thing. The Lord tells us in Gita, he comes to this world to protect the innocent, in this case, the demigods, and deny, annihilate the miscreants, the demons, and reestablish the principles of religion. So he's stating that right out. And also, he's doing it again and again. So Moham Sarvabhuteshu, Krishna tells in Gita that I'm impartial. I don't favor anyone. I'm everyone's well-wisher. So we find that Maharaj Parikshit is not just listening. He's hearing very, very attentively. It's not just a ritual. He's deeply trying to understand every word that Shukadev Goswami is speaking. That is the nature of a sense of urgency. When there's an urgent crisis that's right in front of you, usually you become extremely attentive in that situation. When things are just going along, the tendency is to just go along with it. In order for the message of Krishna to deeply enter our hearts and transform our consciousness. We must intensely be hearing and intensely chanting. Because Krishna tells in Gita that he reciprocates according to 
how we approach him. We approach Krishna in a uh, leisurely way. Then we'll get, Krishna will give us some leisurely realization of him. If we approach Krishna very urgently, desperately, with great need, then Krishna will give us a very intense experience of his presence in our life. You see, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam is one of the five principal items of devotional service. And especially these five principles have to be taken very, very seriously. When we are forgetful about the predicament of material existence, we take things lightly. And that's when Maya gets us, when we're off guard. Yes? Just like Sometimes ghosts attack people when they're sleeping. Hare Krishna. Because you're completely off guard. Even Indra, when, when Diti fell asleep, right? He, he just went right into her womb to kill the kid. So as long as we're intensely taking shelter of the Lord, Maya cannot touch us. To the degree we're intensely taking shelter of, Ma- of the Lord, Maya cannot. She can allure us through temptations, but she cannot overcome us. Because Krishna is there to help us. But if we're casually taking shelter of Krishna. Maya has the power to infiltrate and overcome our consciousness. Maybe all at once, maybe little by little by little. Parikshit Maharaj had seven days to live. We're already in the seventh canto. So several, several days have already passed. For him, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam was his all in all in life. It was everything. He wasn't worried about you know, the grades of his children in school. He wasn't worried about uh, any economic um, crises that may have been looming over his head. He understood death is coming. It's not only coming, it's here. That was his state. So he was listening carefully. He wanted to understand every detail to his capacity. It's not that Sukade, that Parikshit Maharaj was just kind of, uh, just kind of waiting, you know, tolerating these lower chapters, and in his mind he's thinking, "I'm just waiting for the Rasa Lila to come." <laughs> it wasn't like that. He understood if I want to approach the Rasa Lila or Krishna's more higher pastimes, I must deeply understand everything here. Because you see, this question today is very, very important. He's trying to understand Krishna. (laughs) Krishna is inconceivable. He's a chuta. But still, according to our capacity, we want to understand Krishna. We want to know Krishna. And the process of learn of knowing is to hear from those who know Krishna. <coughs> Can't believe it. Is that Namananda Prabhu? <laughs> of all people, 
to have cell phone go off in the class. Amazing, amazing. I'm sure it will never happen again, though. <laughs> Thank you very much. He was so absorbed in the class, he almost forgot to turn off the ringer. That was, that was the thing. So absorbed, he forgot to turn off the ringer. <laughs> Shukadeva Goswami is so happy with this question. Because it gives him an opportunity to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the loving relationships between the Lord and his devotees. This verse... Shukadeva Goswami is saying that such wonderful topics about the Lord and his devotees always counteract the miseries of materialistic way of life. Always. But of course, the, the power is there. But how much we access the power is based on our receptivity. Tadvidi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya. The first principle of receiving knowledge is to approach an authority, a guru, and be submissive. If we are not submissive, we are not receptive. If we think we know, even if we know a lot of good things, and even if those good things are right, still, if we're in an imperfect state and we think we know, that uh, attachment to our own knowledge, it blocks the mercy from flowing deeply into our hearts. Because Krishna consciousness is not about academic information stored in our brain. It's about accessing the mercy of the Lord. Therefore, the first principle is to be submissive. And how to be submissive? Krishna showed us through his own devotees. Bhagavad Gita, as long as Arjuna thought he knew, he, he could hear from Krishna, but he couldn't really absorb it. So Krishna did not bother to even speak to him until he was submissive. Karbanya doso pahatas vubhava prichchamitvam dharma samuta chaya. He was put in such a crisis situation that he came to this realization. This battle is before me, and there's loved ones, people I respect, people who it's my duty to honor, and they are on the other side. I have to fight them and kill them? He was very, very much confused. Serious crisis. He tried to work it out in his own mind, with his own intelligence, but it was impossible. Like a, like a fly in the web of a spider. The more it tries to get out on its own, the more it becomes entangled. Prahlad Maharaj tells that material solutions to material problems, the solution creates a bigger problem than the original problem in due course of time. 
but one of the greatest downfalls of humanity historically is very few people including the greatest leaders really have a vision of seeing the whole picture and how our decisions will affect the future we become so caught up in the moment to resolve the conflict of the moment we make make our elaborate plans but how is that actually going to affect the future of my life the future of the world yes science and technology so much so many comforts and benefits are being created why because they make money and actually even medical industry you know they're they're making drugs that might cure a certain illness but most of it it's being sponsored and funded by these massive drug companies and they want that to make money yes they want the drug to make money they may care about your health too but one of the reasons they care about their health more than other people is because they're going to profit from it so if they find something that's going to help you government regulations and everything you know they're they're supposed to be you know checking and balances but we see often times create something worse the industry of today common sense even back when they first started industries it's common sense if you do a little research it's going to pollute the environment and more and more people are going to start doing it because it's successful and it's profit making and soon the whole ecology is going to fall to pieces anybody who's sincere could have figured that out in the 1920s but no one was really thinking of that you can't say they were bad they just didn't even think about that they were thinking about the now or the near future so today yes there are scientific investigations and scientific research and trying to create all these different um new technologies of biology and so forth and it may appear this is great but it could be the downfall of civilization we don't know mahatma means one who is broad minded <clears throat> broad minded means that seeing the whole picture not only seeing the past and the present and not only tomorrow and the next year but seeing in the future in terms of eternity to that st- extent that is why sometimes different predicaments took place Sri the propa would fight like a hero at Radharas Bihari temple he was battling against um forces materially far more powerful he didn't have a chance and devotees were very much flustered and frustrated and confused they were diseased in fact the main warrior of shri prabhupada at that time was his holiness giriraj swami maharaj who was arriving at 11:30 today in bombay <laughs> not here but at the airport <laughs> but he will be coming here after almost 10 years of not being in india so i have to end class soon because i'm going to the airport to collect to greet 
offer my obeisances and gratitude to him. Yes, when Prabhupada was dealing with that situation, he wasn't just seeing a little piece of land way out in the suburbs of Bombay, which wasn't even a good place for a temple. He was looking years. He was seeing from the eternal platform. He was seeing the whole picture, everything. So the miseries of material existence, they are there. Shukadeva Goswami says that just hearing and speaking the topics of the Lord always counteracts the miseries of materialistic life. But we must very, very seriously with a submissive consciousness here. That was Arjuna's situation. He was miserable. He became submissive. I don't know, Krishna, tell me. Then his heart was ready to receive knowledge. An illiterate person who's submissive will get more benefit in the association of a saintly person than a learned scholar who can cite a hundred thousand slokas who doesn't have that submission. Because Krishna's bhava grahi, he sees our sentiment. He doesn't need our knowledge but he wants our love. So yes, Parikshit Maharaj, cursed to die in seven days. He was already a great devotee, but here he is. He's very, very submissive. And Shukadeva Goswami says, if we hear with this submissiveness, without fail, this message elevate you to a transcendental platform by which all miseries of material existence are counteracted. Therefore, great sages like Narada are always hearing and chanting and giving others the facility to hear and chant. Para Upakar Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught that this hearing and chanting process to facilitate others in this path is the greatest welfare work there is. Because what is welfare about? It's simply about counteracting the miseries of material existence. Yes? You don't hear much about welfare work to people on Malabar Hill. You hear about welfare work to people in the ghettos, people in tsunami relief or earthquake relief because they're suffering. Material miseries have just crushed upon them. <clears throat> so to counteract miseries is welfare. But a Mahatma, one who sees the whole picture, understands give a person food, they're going to be hungry again. Give a person medical relief, they're still going to grow old, get diseased, and die. And the same thing's going to happen to the wealthy people, just in a different way. The same miseries, just different style. Yes? You can, you can die of cancer wearing... A gumsha? <laughs> or you can die of cancer wearing your elegant marriage gowns with nice gold and earrings and mascaras. 
Give me my wedding dress, I'm dying. Is there a difference? Yes, there is, to some people. <laughs> oh, she died in her wedding dress. <laughs> died in a gumsha. Life is spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if ladies were gumptious. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm sannyasi, I don't know all these things. <clears throat> so, it's like that. Birth, old age, disease, and death. Whether you go through the process as a great prosperous hero who has made the front page of the Financial Times dozens of times or whether you go through birth, old age, disease and death as a brahmachari on the floor of the ashram. It's just different different dresses. What does this say? He missed his flight. Really? He missed his flight. No comment. I was once with him, and he missed three flights in a row. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> because he just gets so much absorbed with people. It's time to go, but he talks to somebody, and then Maharaj, it's time to go. Soon, Maharaj, it's too late. They make another change the flight, and he talks to somebody else. Maharaj, it's time to go, and he's just so absorbed and absorbed. He's just, he's too much in the mode of goodness for this Kali Yuga scheduling. <laughs> of his lotus feet. Where was I? Huh? Oh, yes, yes. We were, talk we were talking about whether ladies were gumptious. <laughs> So what is the difference? Old age, disease, and death. Just passing through it in a different dress, in a different house. But the purpose of human life is to counteract birth, old age, disease, and death. <clears throat> and this Hari Kata and Hari Kirtan is the means by which Krishna has given us to counteract birth, old age, disease, and death. Now, everyone may have their opinion, <clears throat> but Krishna has created this material existence. He knows how it works. He knows why it works. And he's also given us the way, the way to counteract it. Tasmat Bharata Saravatma Bhagavan Ishwaro Hari. That the, the, the means to, it, to rise above all fear is to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. Therefore, it is the greatest welfare. It solves the problem. finishes birth, old age, disease, and death. Enlightens.
enlightens the eternal soul. And restores our relationship with Krishna. Harinama, 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 Eva Kevalam, Kalo Nasteva, 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 Gatiranyata. There's no other way. Shukadeva Goswami is so grateful to Parikshit Maharaj because he's so submissive. Shukadeva Goswami knows that whatever I'm going to speak to him is going to save his life forever because he's so submissive. He's compassionate. Shukadeva Goswami is not just speaking because he's going to get some uh, respectability of being the one chosen to speak this Bhagavatam in front of everyone else. A very prestigious event. The most prestigious kata in history. With the assembly of the greatest scholars and, and sadhus ever. And he's being asked to speak to a king. Very prestigious. But he doesn't care anything for prestige. He only cares one thing. To save Parikshit Maharaja's life. He's going to die in seven days. How to save his life? By saving his soul. And this is the way to do it. By speaking Hari Kata. So he's very, very much appreciating and grateful Parikshit Maharaj because Parikshit Maharaj is receiving it. If you really want to give something, to someone in a spirit of compassion that you, you will feel indebted and grateful to that person if they receive it. Because we don't want anything for ourselves. We only want for you. So the greatest thing you can do for me is just accept it. Srila Prabhupada was asked, what can we do to repay you for this debt? You have given us everything. You've pulled us right out of the lowest modes of ignorance and passion. You've given us Krishna consciousness. How can we repay you? Prabhupada didn't want money. Prabhupada didn't want anything. Except, he said, you can repay me by accepting what I'm giving you and sharing it with others. And those who preach the message of the Lord, the greatest treasure to find is someone who urgently, submissively wants to hear. That's treasure. That's wealth. Because there we can, our service can have very, very substantial effects. But said, better one moon than thousands of stars. So yes, we may give class to 10,000 people. Of course, 10,000 moons are better than one moon. <laughs> but if one person, if even one person is seriously Submissively hearing. That is a great treasure. That is what a compassionate preacher is longing for. To really help someone. Shukadeva Goswami begins this sector of the Bhagavatam. Because this question, he's ecstatic by this question of Parikshit Maharaj. Because he knows how he's going to answer it. 
And this answer is not only going to thoroughly enlighten Parikshit Maharaj, but it's going to thoroughly enlighten for all eternity anybody who hears it. He's going to speak the story of Prahlad and Lord Narasimha Dev. And Srila Prabhupada said, Sriman Hiranyakashipu. <laughs> In a lecture, Prabhupada writes, he, he speaks how we, are, we should offer our obeisances and to be very grateful to Hiranyakashipu. He's done great service for the world. Yes, because without him, nobody would ever appreciate Prahlad. No one would have ever taken seriously his teachings. And we would have never seen the form of Narasimha Dev. So Shukadev Goswami... This is the key, the essence of transcendental life, what we're about to see right here. Parikshit Maharaj is totally submissive. He's longing to hear with great attention. He's really, really, really listening because he understands its birth, its life and death. I have to understand this. I'll give a gross analogy. You're flying an airplane as a pilot. And all the controls start going out. And you don't know what to do. You're absolutely flustered. Because you only know how to fly an airplane with the controls. All the controls are gone. And you're crashing. You're just going down. And you, the um, air traffic control tower is telling you there's only one way to save your plane. Now listen to my directions. Now he's not going to be, you're not going to have time to repeat it because you're going down. You can't say, well, you know, I, I kind of spaced out. Can you repeat that again? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, mm, and he's saying you have to first, you know, turn this knob and then you turn your, and then you have to turn this, and then you say, you know, you're going down, you know. You know, our tendency, you know, I can space out. If I space out in class today, you know, I'll just listen to the tape. <laughs> it's not a problem. Because, you know, there's a tape ministry. I'll just listen again. Fall asleep. <laughs> just go, go and read it later. No problem. That may be true. But when you're listening to the tape, you'll do the same thing. That's the problem. (laughs) (laughs) There has to be this sense of urgency. There has to be. If your plane's going down and the air traffic control person is telling you, no, you have to do, you pull this lever here and turn this switch here, your life and soul is going to be so absolutely attuned to every word he says. Do you agree? Just put yourself in that situation. Don't just listen. You're there. Your plane's going down. You don't know what to do. You're absolutely bewildered. And somebody's telling you what to do. And if you don't do it exactly perfect now, you're dead. You're attentive to every word. And if you don't understand something, you're going to ask it. Yes? That was Pariksit Maharaja's mood. He was submissive. Now, Shukadeva Goswami, why is he the person who's speaking? Because he's also completely submissive. He's in the same mood as Pariksit. That's how he's receiving knowledge. Therefore, he is not just speaking what he knows. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto Srila Vyasa today. 
and then be dis- begin describing topics concerning the activities of the Lord. A real preacher, a, a one who is in parampara, never thinks I know. Just as Parikshit Maharaj is submissively taking shelter of Shukadev Goswami to hear, Shukadev Goswami is taking shelter of Vyasadev to hear before he speaks. Whatever he heard, whatever he knows, he has received from Vyasadev. It's not his knowledge. It's a gift. It's a gift of God coming through Parampara. So he's showing his gratitude. Without gratitude, the heart cannot receive blessings. Blessings could come, but they cannot go into the heart unless the heart is grateful. You can throw seeds in the ground, but unless this ground is fertile, the seeds will just dry up and die. For all of us, so many blessings are coming every day. Just because we're getting the blessings, it doesn't mean we're going to greatly benefit. We benefit by how we receive the blessings. When our heart is fertile through gratitude, through a sense of urgent need, receptivity, So, Shukadev Goswami, he understands that whatever I'm going to speak is not my words. It's by the grace of my guru. And therefore, he offers his obeisances to his guru. He shows his gratitude to his guru. He prays to his guru to empower him to speak. Srila Prabhupada, when he spoke to us, such profound knowledge saved so many people's lives. But always in his heart, and at times he would express it, I'm only repeating the words of my Guru Maharaj. That is my only qualification. Very powerful statement. He didn't say that's part of my qualification. He said it is my only qualification for everything he did in the service of Krishna. For every life he salvaged from Maya. His only qualification is he heard submissively from his Gurudev and he was repeating that message. Srila Prabhupada would sometimes tell us he wasn't necessarily the most erudite scholar amongst his god brothers or other Vaishnavas. He was a great scholar. But he was not necessarily the most erudite. He admitted that himself. But why was he empowered to do it? Nobody else could even attempt to do it. because he had the full power of Krishna with him. Why? Because he considered that his only qualification was he heard submissively from his Guru Maharaj and he was repeating that message. You see, we can use our creative intelligence to try to affect people's lives. And that's good. We're supposed to. Prabhupada wanted us to use our intelligence according to time, place, and circumstance to reach people's hearts. That creativity is the duty of a disciple. But the real substance that transforms people's hearts 
is that flow of mercy that comes when we adopt the spirit of Shukadeva Goswami and Srila Prabhupada. That my only qualification is I'm just hearing from my Guru Maharaj and I'm repeating those words. It's not about me. It's about the power of Guru's mercy. I'm just an instrument. When we surrender to just being an instrument, we become divinely empowered. When we think we're the doer, we're done. And we do. Blank bullets sound exactly like real bullets. You know what blank bullets are. It means it's a bullet. The, the gunpowder and everything's there, but nothing comes out. It just makes the exact same sound. <coughs> in case you are sleeping. <laughs> yes? person has a blank bullet. <laughs> person has a real bullet. <laughs> <laughs> sounds the same. Maybe not because of my imperfect... It sounds the same. But one has substance and one has no substance. So two devotees may be speaking the same words. One may have minimal substance, one may have maximum substance. What determines the substance? That we consider that our only qualification is I'm just repeating the words of my spiritual master. That is Shukadeva Goswami's realization. Govinda Charan Devi. Govinda Charan Devi Prabhu is now leaving for Kerala. And it has been such a joy to have her association here. And she is, in my heart, she is representing one of the dearest disciples of Prabhupada and God brothers of my own heart, Matsyavatar Prabhu, who, by the way, selected and shipped the marble for our walls chose the colors and directed the painting of our ceiling and selected and sent the, um, the covers for all of our furniture and so many other things. And on behalf of Matsyavatar Prabhu, Govinda Charan Devi has come. We thank you very much. And everyone, please... Offer your gratitude to her and her guru by loudly chanting. I would say I'm sorry to embarrass you, but I'm not sorry at all. (laughs) Thank you very, very much. Hare Krishna. And I thank you all very much. (laughs) He actually missed his flight. (laughs) (laughs) Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Is there any questions? Yes, Srinathji Prabhu. Haribo Krishna. Maharaj, thank you for this wonderful class and realizations. But while you were speaking, one thing I realized about this very temple, that when uh, Chandrasen Bhatia, the third generation trustee, managing trustee was dying in Bhatia Hospital of heart attack, Got, I was reading a message, I'm sorry. So I was saying that the, when the third generation, um, uh, first of all, I thank you for the lecture and this uh, realization because I had the same realization uh, after you spoke that when Chandrasen Bhatia, who was the managing trustee, the third grandson of this founder, 
he was having a heart attack and he was in Bhati hospital. I came to know, so I rushed there. So I thought to my mind, what should I do? What would <coughs> Prabhupada do? What would you do? Or, you know. So I started preaching to him, Bhagavatam. And uh, he, um, I don't know what he did at the last minute, but I preached and I left home for my house. But at night he changed the whole will and gave this property to us. In the morning he died. Nazi Prabhu, you are not a blank bullet. You are a real bullet. <laughs> there, there is, because of your taking shelter of Srila Prabhupada, such substance came that it transformed a man's heart. Not only to remember Krishna at the time of death, but also to perform a service just before he dies that will spiritually benefit hundreds and thousands of people. Thank you very much. Shri Natsvi Prabhu Ki Much louder, please. One moon is better than thousand stars. <laughs> but thousand moons is better than one moon. Many a times we hear the message of Bhagavatam and preachers mainly they speak also. I heard that they point towards the audience. They see their welfare and what is best for them. They speak this. But often it is seen that even the message is coming but we are not so attentive or able to absorb the message in the heart. So though it is spoken to us but we are not able to relate or I am not able to relate with that message and message even apparently it's not benefiting. So how to cultivate that as you were speaking about submissive attitude so that we can really understand this is spoken for me and I need to put it in my practice. That is within the power of your free will. We may feel or we may not feel. But with our intelligence we should know that I need this. Unfortunately, sometimes we just have to go through unbearable crises to take it seriously. And sometimes people, even in that unbearable crisis, they don't take it serious. So we always have our free will. And you have that, we all have that free will right now. We can take it seriously right now. Even when the crisis is not so much. We simply have to make that decision. I need this. We have to be sensitive to the reality around us. The example is given of the goat is going to the slaughterhouse and he's just eating grasses in line. He's standing in line with the other goats just going forward, eating the grass, eating the grass. And When you get to the front, thwack. Thwack. Your head is severed. So those who are just looking down, they're just <laughs> eating grass. But if you look a little forward, you see, 
understand where you're, what's, what's coming. Yes? So we can't just see life according to what it is now. We have to look ahead. Birth, old age, disease, and death is a reality. What's happening in this world around us is a reality. Yes, we could come to class and just be looking down and eating the grass of just thinking about so many things that are in our mind and so many concerns. But if you look forward and you see what's coming, and it could come any moment, and these, and these things that have so much importance to us now are practically irrelevant. All that matters is Krishna. Yes? <clears throat> You know, you may be all upset that someone hurt my feelings. But if you were falling from the top of a cliff, would that have any relevance, that someone hurt your feelings? All that would matter is how I could fix my mind on Krishna. The reality is, from the time we were born, we were pushed off a cliff and we're falling. It's a reality. We're all falling from that cliff. But so many petty things that really doesn't make any difference because we don't understand our predicament. We take it so seriously. And we fight about it. And we offend. We make apparats to others on that basis. And we lose Krishna by doing that. If we understand it, we're falling. Falling faster and faster. And you'll make that choice. That is, that is intelligence. To understand where we're at and what we need. That is real intelligence. Does that answer your question? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, you spoke about uh, ja kar paropkar, doing welfare to others by speaking this message. But uh, before that, there is janma sarthak. So uh, if I have not perfected my life, then uh, how do I do welfare to others? Uh, your question. Maharaj, in your lecture you spoke about speaking about Krishna to others and doing para upakar so uh, for doing that it is said that first we need to perfect our life by doing janma sarthak so if I have not yet perfected my life so how can I uh, do and even if I do it as a duty then many times we get carried away by uh, doing so much preaching that we spoil our health or we do many late night programs. So uh, we don't know where we should stop also. So what is the limit to that paropkar? To give Krishna conscious to others is a very essential part of the process of purifying our own heart. <clears throat> In giving we receive. It is not that we perfect our life, then we preach. Sharing the message of Krishna is an essential part of perfecting our life. Why? Because it's what Lord Chaitanya ordered. It's what, our, it's what Srila Prabhupada ordered. We perfect our life by pleasing Srila Prabhupada within ISKCON. He wants us to preach. That is the path of perfection. But we have to do it in the proper attitude. It's not that we only preach. We access and then we share. We come to the Mangalarti, we chant our rounds very, very sincerely, we hear Srimad Bhagavatam every day, we perform menial service, we're accessing mercy by doing that. And then when we speak through our actions, through our words, we're, we're, all, we're accessing mercy by giving that. We're accessing by taking it, we're accessing it by giving it. 
But if we don't access by taking it, we have nothing to give. Yes? So yes, preaching is very important. It is, we're doing it as humble servants, as postal peons, to purify our life. If we get caught up by Maya and think I'm great and everybody is honoring me, then it, we're, we become blank bullet. And if by the mercy of Guru and Krishna, <coughs> bullets may come out of you to hit them, but they're not affecting you. This can also happen. Well, you can preach and affect other people's lives, but you remain hollow inside. Hare Krishna. So therefore, it is very important that there be balance. If we're preaching so much that our sadhana is not good, we're preaching so much that our health is not good, then we will not we will not be able to access. Eventually, we're going to dry up. So we should, should regulate. We should have a regulation so that we have we can maintain the health of a body that belongs to Guru and Krishna for their purpose. Yes. It's like we have our temple vehicles. <clears throat> well, it's not that we just leave the vehicle in the parking garage because this vehicle belongs to Krishna. So if I go out, it, it might crash. So I don't want to take any chances. Hmm? So you just leave it there. There's a purpose for the vehicle. The purpose of the vehicle is to go out and do Krishna's service. So your body is a vehicle. It is to perform Krishna's service. But at the same time, the other extreme of just not using it because it's Krishna's and I don't want anything to happen to it, the other is just forget about oil. I don't have time to put oil in it. I'm too busy using it to preach. Huh? Forget about giving it its proper tune-ups. Forget about washing it. You know, these are all things that... It's just... I have too many things to do with this vehicle. Yes? Within a few months, the vehicle's spoiled. Can't go anywhere. Yes? Who's in charge of vehicles at the temple? <coughs> Keshav Chandra Prabhu. Well, if you come back with the vehicle, and the, the engine's blown out because of no oil and the, and the body's all dented and dirty and everything else, well, he'll say, this is Krishna's vehicle. He'll say, well, I used it for Krishna's service, Prabhu. <laughs> but you didn't use it properly in Krishna's service because that vehicle's supposed to last for a long time. Yes? Better that you do... 50 years of wonderful service than one year of um, explosive service. <laughs> so it's Krishna's vehicle. We have to take care of it. We have to give it its nourishment. So it's... It's, it's, it's effective... But at the same time, we have to use it. Does that answer your question? Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. His Holiness Giriraj Swami Maharaj Ki Jai. Go Premanandi.